Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have yet another viewer request video, this time comparing Kafka again to yet another kind of message broker, queue manager, streaming engine, RabbitMQ. So what I'm gonna do in this video is basically just compare Apache Kafka against RabbitMQ as they're both you know, very much leading tools in messaging and data streaming. Both are essential middleware for facilitating kind of communication, coordination between applications, but they do have some different fundamental design differences and different capabilities that make them better suited for different distinct use cases. So what I'm gonna try to do in this video is help you understand the differences, benefits, drawbacks, and practical applications of the, both of these tools so that you can decide which one is better for your particular use case. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, gonna start out with the basic, basics of Apache Kafka. So Apache Kafka was an open source, it is an open source distributed event streaming platform that was developed initially by LinkedIn and then later released under the Apache Software Foundation. And it is designed at its core to handle real time, high throughput event streaming and processing and operates on a distributed log-based architecture where you have various producer nodes that will produce messages to organized topics, um, which are then petitioned into you know, sub kind of subfolders of each of those individual topics, but generally topics are your organizational structure. Um, and these producers will produce a log, log data to these topics, which then the consumers will read the logs that are being generated by these topics and consume the data that those producers push to those topics. Um, and this really helps ensure durability and fault tolerance um, because you have you know, many different distributed systems that are all kind of predicting their own segments of data. So the failure of one segment doesn't affect the other. Um, and Kafka's focus on event-driven design makes a really natural choice for real-time data pipelines and stream processing use cases. Now, RapidMQ, on the other hand, is more of a traditional style message broker that implements advanced message queuing protocol. Um, and what really that means is that it's going to take your messages from your different producers and almost act as a load balancer to determine, hey, where are these messages going to go in this set of queues so that each of these queues can then process data and send them out to various consumer nodes uh, easily. And so this is really designed around reliable message delivery and task queue management. So widely used for asynchronous communications between systems, which offers a lot of flexibility and support for different messaging protocols, including AMQP, STOMP, and MQTT. Don't worry if you don't know what those are, I don't either. Um, but its emphasis on reliability and simplicity makes it a really versatile tool for a lot of messaging scenarios. Um, and that's kind of a key point there, whereas RabbitMQ is kind of an asynchronous queue-based architecture. Kafka is more of a pub subscribe architecture. So if you're used to Google PubSub, that's a good analogy there. Um, and so that leads to some key differences, which I want to go into now. So at a high level, the main difference between Kafka and RabbitMQ is, is really just how they handle messages. So as I kind of alluded to, Kafka employs a publish subscribe model where producers write messages to topics, consumers then subscribe to those topics to receive data, and messages in Kafka are durably stored on disk replicated then across those different brokers for fault tolerance. You have multiple different copies and will remain available for a configurable retention period. So it's meant to be kind of a long lived source of truth over what has happened, what messages have been produced and consumed across your organization. And this design has allowed Kafka to function both as a real time data stream and also a persistent event store. RabbitMQ, in contrast, uses a queue-based architecture where producers send messages to exchanges and then exchanges route those messages to one or more queues. Consumers then will retrieve messages from those queues and RabbitMQ offers acknowledgement me mechanisms to ensure that those messages are delivered reliably, which means that it basically has mechanisms to say, hey, this consumer has received the message that it was supposed to receive from this producer. Um, and while it does support durable queues for persistence, its default operation is optimized for in-memory message handling. Um, so not long-lived storage, but rather just prioritizing speed um, while trading off the ability to actually store those messages for the super long-term efficiently. Um, and then also the scalability strategies of the two systems differ pretty, pretty greatly. Um, Kafka achieves scalability through topic partitioning, where messages within a topic are distributed across multiple partitions. Um, and then each partition can be processed independently by different brokers and different consumers. 
this makes Kafka super highly scalable for high throughput applications because you have essentially a many to many to many approach. So you don't have any bottlenecks within your processing organization. RabbitMQ, on the other hand, while scalable through adding, you know, clustering and sharding, does not natively support things like partitioning. So it's going to be limited in its ability to handle very large message volumes because it doesn't really have great ways to actually segment those messages into more easily routable um, partitions or topics like Kafka has. Everything's kind of just coming through one massive stream um, rather than you know, many different smaller streams all processing at the same time. So now that we've talked a little about the architecture, let's talk a little bit about the benefits and drawbacks that these different architectural approaches provide. So Apache, Apache Kafka offers a number of different really compelling benefits. Um, it's high throughput, makes it ideal for handling massive amounts of data, often in the range of millions of events per second. So like really insane top of the line data throughput. Um, and Kafka's durability also ensures that those tens of millions of, of events are stored persistently, replicated across brokers, providing fault tolerance. Um, and then additionally, that platform scale, horizontal scalability also allows it to grow with increased data, processing demands by just adding additional compute, adding additional you know, streams for that data to flow through, which makes it really suitable for large scale applications where you might need to continue to grow and you can't just plan for current capacity. Um, additionally, Kafka has a pretty well-maintained ecosystem around it. Um, you have things like Kafka Streams and integrations with tools like Apache Flink for actually doing more powerful real-time streaming processing capabilities as part of Kafka. Kind of a common misconception with Kafka is that it's a data streaming engine. It's really more of a message broker, um, or it is a streaming engine, but it doesn't do stream processing. That's where you're going to need to bring in additional tools like Kafka Streams, like Flink, like Spark to actually do the processing of the data um, because Kafka is just taking raw data and sending it out to different places and collecting it from different places. Um, but with all those benefits, Kafka is definitely not without its challenges. Um, setting up and managing a Kafka cluster can be really complex, it requires pretty significant operational expertise. It's not something you're just gonna be able to you know, pull off the rack and start handling millions of events per second. It requires a lot of setup, a lot of optimization. Um, and also achieving those exactly once message semantics while possible does add much further complexity and can impact your performance down the line. Um, and so Kafka is really optimized for high throughput scenarios. And as a result, it might actually introduce higher latency in low volume or low latency applications um, because it's just not designed for really slow moving where, you know, hey, maybe there's a message that appears every like couple hours. Now, RabbitMQ on the other hand has kind of a different set of you know, benefits and drawbacks. It really shines in its flexibility and ease of use. It's got great support for multiple different messaging protocols, which makes it very highly adaptable for integrating disparate systems. And RabbitMQ's acknowledgement, retry, and dead letter queue mechanisms also help ensure reliable message delivery, which makes it an excellent choice for task queues and workflows where reliability is critical. <laughs> Additionally, its straightforward setup and extensive documentation helps lower the barrier to entry for new users, and its plugin architecture allows users to extend its functionality relatively easily. However, RabbitMQ does have some limitations in scalability when compared to Kafka. Um, I kind of alluded to this before, but while clustering and federation are supported in RabbitMQ, it doesn't have any kind of native partitioning system and clustering and federation isn't really what it's built around. So it really will struggle with very large scale messaging streams because it just doesn't have the multi-threading support to be able to handle that. Um, and that's kind of you know one of the downsides of having everything kind of going through you know an exchange broker um, before it gets sent down to different queues um, because you know that is a single uh, bottleneck where things can get slowed down. Um, Additionally, the overhead associated with durable message storage actually within uh, on disk because you have to do it on disk if you want to do durable message storage instead of you know writing it directly um, can mean it's going to impact performance if you are trying to maintain all of the messages that are being processed for RabbitMQ uh, for the long term. Um, so really important for high throughput scenarios. Um, and then also RabbitMQ just completely lacks the native stream processing capabilities that make Kafka a good choice for real-time data pipelines with Kafka Stream. So you really don't have many ways to actually process the data that you're streaming. You can just monitor it and check and see how it's flowing, but you can't actually change it um, within RabbitMQ. You'll need to rely on other systems to actually do that part of it. Now, 
final thing I want to go through is use case suitability. Um, so really, there's a lot of differences in architecture and functionality between Kafka and RabbitMQ, even though they appear to kind of the same on the surface. So now I want to talk about, hey, what is Kafka well suited for? What is RabbitMQ well suited for? And Kafka is really well suited for event streaming and analytics where high throughput, durability, and real-time processing are essential. So it's going to excel in applications like log aggregation, where you need to collect vast amounts of data from distributed systems and process it really efficiently. And in those use cases, Kafka's integration with stream processing frameworks makes it really ideal for you know, taking, doing this large scale, collecting all this data, then doing complex event processing, real-time transformations, and it's also a really strong choice for microservices communications in service systems where you need high volume data exchange. Um, and you know, in production environments, some real examples of this, um, obviously it started at LinkedIn, but it's found really widespread adoption in industries where real-time data streaming is a core requirement. For example, Uber uses Kafka to power real-time event streaming for ride matching, dynamic pricing, notification systems, Netflix leverages Kafka to process billions of events daily, um, enabling real-time analytics and personalized recommendations. Um, and then LinkedIn, the, the OG Kafka shop, uh, uses the platform extensively for log aggregation and activity stream processing. Um, and those are really kind of some of the main use cases you'll see Kafka being used for. Now, RabbitMQ, on the other hand, is really better suited for task queue management and traditional messaging patterns. So it's really gonna be most often used in scenarios where reliability is very critical. Distributing tasks to, you know, you wanna be able to distribute tasks to worker nodes in a queue-based system um, and, you know, kind of have that round robin approach. Um, and its ability to handle request response messaging patterns where you are making sure that this response uh, was received to a request from another system makes it a really good fit for applications that require synchronous communication. Um, and RabbitMQ is also an excellent choice for integrating legacy systems because, as I kind of alluded to earlier, it has support for a lot of old school messaging protocols. So that can help enable more seamless communication between older you know, mainframe components and newer cloud components. Um, and so really for any application that requires low latency messaging with fewer retries, RabbitMQ's lightweight and efficient design makes it a very practical solution, especially at a smaller scale. Um, and also, some production use cases, you'll typically see RabbitMQ, some users that are using it currently in the real world, they're using it to focus on reliability and flexibility. Um, so Instagram uses RabbitMQ to handle notifications and asynchronous tasks, making sure that messages are reliably delivered even under heavy loads. Um, Zalando, a European e-commerce giant, actually employs RabbitMQ for order management and microservices orchestration. And Mozilla Firefox uses RabbitMQ to facilitate communication between backend services, um, like those that are actually powering Firefox Sync. So that's really kind of the, everything you need to know about the differences between Kafka and RabbitMQ. Um, and your choice between Ra Kafka and RabbitMQ ultimately depends on the specific requirements of your application. Kafka is going to excel at for high throughput, durable, real-time stream processing use cases, whereas RabbitMQ is better suited for task queues and traditional messaging patterns. Um, so I hope you have learned something today. I hope you figured out what is best for your use case, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.